The aim of this video is to demonstrate some methods for farming training bonus as part of item leveling. I'm going to demonstrate the aggressive spying method and the diver method. For attacking units, I will assume you've already mastered their subclasses in order to get the 10 million basic stats. But for support units, I will try to explain which subclasses are required for various abilities. Now, the best method for pure training bonus is uh, using divers which you can make via the Alchemist, but it takes a while to make them. A Diver 10, even if it's the only thing you're making and you have a maxed out Alchemist full of units, uh, it takes 5 or 6 turns to make one. You could make 18 of them every 100 turns. And so if you want a method that doesn't need those, uh, that's where the aggressive spying method comes in, which is actually best done for a mixture of training bonus and kill bonus rather than for pure training bonus as it's quite reliant on mystery rooms. Now the idea of the aggressive spying method is you have the aggressive spying common ability from the Kuna Weekly class so that when you enter gates you go down extra floors in a unit in the maxed out item adventure squad so that you skip even more floors and the result is that instead of going down one floor you go down five so every two gates gets you to a boss floor and if you put explorer on a bunch of units to increase your chances of, of encountering mystery rooms and set uh, the item to the mystery room route you will spend most of your time in mystery rooms and boss floor where you can get training bonus. I will demonstrate the aggressive spying method first and then I'll switch to the diver method afterwards. Because the aggressive spying method will spend a lot of time in mystery rooms and hence is uh, more of a mix of training bonus and kill bonus, you'll want to be on 20 star for it. If all you need is training bonus, 0 star will do. And just to demonstrate while I'm here, my active curry is a sunshine rod curry for 50 uh, for 50 percent extra star resistance, and it's also got 100 thimbles in it for 100 percent critical rate. Now, because aggressive spying is a DLC ability, I will assume you have DLC when demonstrating these setups. If you happen to only have uh, the DLC generic classes, but don't have, uh, don't have other DLC, you could still do something similar to what I'm doing. Uh, I'm going to use Zeta for this because the idea, what I'm going to be trying to do, what I'm going to try and do, is have Zeta set up to kill gatekeepers and then still go into the gate with hit and away, because this allows you to move again after killing something. And Zeta's badass overlord unique ability makes him a lot stronger. At max he has an extra 100% attack adjustment, so essentially an extra 100% attacking stats during damage calcs. The downside to do using this for Zeta, doing this with Zeta is that he starts off with really low movement. So you could use other units for this. I have a bunch of terror spells on him, because you can get quite a lot of range on those. So, ability-wise, Badass Overlord is his own unique. This takes quite a lot of reincarnations to max out, but it's very powerful once you do. Salt Attack, the further you move, the more damage you deal. Elemental Force adds uh, attack adjustment equal to your resistance to an element two attacks of that element and this is another reason for using Zeta because that 50% uh, star res from the Sunshine World Curry adds to his existing 50% star resistance and he reaches the 99% cap and he's also got the others at 99% because I've got the Firefighter, Cryophile and Aeronaut on him I also have a Professional on him for extra critical damage otherwise He's just got movement gear. Uh, Axel gear is from killing Baal. As as daunting as that can sound, 
if you're strong enough to be trying to max, uh, to, 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 if you're strong enough to try to max out Carnage rank 40 items, you can actually handle him anyway. In fact, the Usalia setup from one of my previous videos, in fact, two of my previous videos, the Usalia and Kilia setup, and the Comet Disaster setup. Yeah, this Usalia can be used to kill normal Baal on zero stars anyway. Like, if you need to farm it, you can do it with her. Uh, I've got a staff as a sub weapon. Reason being, this increases uh, magic range. I could have it as a main weapon instead. I just wanted to leave his Zeta, uh, Zeta sword in his hand. Wait, I've got Bushido on him. Um, so this increases damage dealt when attacking a single unit. Now, technically, this could instead be acceleration shot, which increases damage the further away you are from a target, and because you can get a lot of range on terror spells, this can get really strong. But because there are shortcuts for skipping straight to uh, the gate or, stra or straight to a boss, uh, it tends to be convenient to just attack from fairly near to the boss anyway, or to fairly near the gatekeeper. But if you really want to try and squeeze more damage out of it, Acceleration Shot would be better. This is just for convenience. The Aggressive Spying, already mentioned, skips extra floors. Purgatory increases critical damage. We have 100% critical rate from the curry. If you know for sure that you're going to have higher speed than your target, use Kamikaze instead. This doubles critical damage. Uh, and the So the description of this is wrong. The description claims that the target has to have higher speed. No. False. You need to have strictly higher speed. If you're at 99 million stats and enemies are at 99 million stats, you can make your you can fix the fact that you're tied with Evil Eye, which lowers enemy stats. So yeah, if you know you're gonna have higher speed, use Kamikaze instead. This is a common ability of Zoroken. You can buy it on him. Pass it round via Carol World, any difficulty will do. Unstable Power comes from Carol World, uh, should be available on Demon Lord or above. On turn 1, it's 50% more stats for a single slot, which is really good. You lose 20% stats every turn after that. You're trying to win in one turn. Hit and away, uh, if you kill something, you can move again. So you can kill a boss, then enter the gate, kill a gatekeeper, then move into the gate. Explorer increases the chance of mystery rooms appearing. Critical point, common ability of Petter, increased critical damage to enemies you're not adjacent to. So you don't have to be right next to an enemy, but you can be two spaces away and it'll uh, deal extra damage. And for two slots, that is really, really powerful. Now, because aggressive spying and hit and away are using up a load of slots. Uh, he's not as strong as he could be, but between Critical Point, Purgatory, Elemental Force, Assault Attack, and Bushido, or alternatively Acceleration Shot, he's still going to be strong enough, especially with Badass Overlord. Now, Christo has a similar setup to in all my other vids. Movement Gear. Violence and Unstable Power for extra stats because of Spurling of Ally. Anyone he's adjacent to, he lends 20% of his int towards their attacking stats, so higher stats on Christo means more damage from your adjacent attackers. Tactician gives people 100% accuracy, which is great. This also prevents Nyx, which otherwise cancel out criticals. Uh, violence is a common ability of Void, pass it around via Carol World. Explorer mentioned before, this is three stars in the, in the pirate subclass. Angel Song, Master the Celestial Host subclass. Increases attack adjustment of adjacent allies. We want Christo next to people, so this is good. Evil Eye, mentioned, uh, as I mentioned before, lowers the stats of enemies, which can help break stat ties. Uh, and just lower enemy stats is good anyway. Uh, you Master Chimera for this. Curse Dance, enemies take slightly more damage, Master Sorcerer. Important thing is Angel Song, Evil Eye is nice, Curse Dance is more or less filler. Uh, Charismatic Novice, common ability of Amizel, 
boost the stats of adjacent allies. Queen orders, common ability of Rosalyn. Units in the same squad get increased magic range. Bodyguards, common ability of uh, Girl Lahal. Male units in the same squad, for example, Zeta, uh, gain, uh, gain additional attack adjustment based on how many units in the squad have bodyguards. So every unit in the squad with bodyguards gives 5% extra attack adjustment to the males. The female units, you can put Gender Bender on them, which is one slot. Uh, made similar to any other vids, movement gear potentially used for afternoon tea to give you an extra turn. Efficient work if you really need to use an item and still do other stuff. Angra Song, Evil Eye, Curse Dance, Bodyguards. Licensed Caregiver is 5 stars in made. Don't need it for this setup, but this lets you use items on multiple units at once. Charismatic Novice, already mentioned, Explorer. If I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna use Mao as a buffing unit, so I've got Braveheart Magic Boost. They're only at plus four, but that's enough for fifty percent. With medical insertion, which you get by mastering Professor, uh, that doubles it to the cap of a hundred percent. Even a plus nine buff spell only reaches seventy five percent, so you need medical insertion to get the max out of buff spells. Live experiment, badly phrased, essentially. Nearby allies deal extra damage, nearby enemies take extra damage, and if nearby allies attack nearby enemies, it does even more damage. Medical insertion, evil eye already mentioned, bodyguards, charismatic novice, queen orders, explorer. Stuff for extra buff range, movement gear. Isalia and the Asagis are the same as in my Comet Disaster setup vid. Basically, a lot of stuff to be to do extra critical damage and be stronger in revenge mode. In case I need her, I've got a sage for multi-attacker to allow units to attack an extra time. Similar setup to anyone else: Angel Song, Evil Eye, Curse Dance, Bodyguards, Charismatic Novice, Queen Orders, Explorer, Movement Gear. Petta can also be used as a support unit because uh, Badass Daughter gives 30% attack adjustment to adjacent Overlord units. This includes Zeta and Usalia. Otherwise, Angel of Song, Evil Eye, oh, so that one's because Dance. Explorer, Charismatic Novice, Bodyguard. Movement Gear. Um, I may end up using Red Magnus or Logan for throwing people. That those should be the only units I'm using. So I am going to demonstrate this on an already leveled item just to show that this works even once the enemies get really strong. Part way into this I'll switch over to the diver method. So on the mystery room route I won't get a mystery room after the first floor because uh, you never get one straight after the floor you enter on. Kill the gatekeeper, go in, should trigger a mystery room. Okay, this one's easy enough. If you technically talk to him from the front. So some of that's both an advantage and a disadvantage for this method is that you're going to keep hitting the innocent town after boss floors. So if you want to leave, that's convenient. But if you don't, it wastes a bit of time. Oh, something I forgot to do but could have done. Uh, you can, if you've encountered Proto Dark Death before, you can pass a bill 
to force the next Mr. Egg to be a proto. I could have sent someone over to lift that level sphere, but wasn't too worried. But yeah, killing Proto is worth. Uh, I think it's worth three training bonuses, which is the equivalent of killing an item god or an item god's two. Item kings are worth two. Item generals are worth one. Clearing mystery room is worth one. Invaders are worth one. So this item's not actually going to get any stronger because I've already soft capped it. Like it's not. I've already um, the base stats already maxed on this, so the training bonus on this is just going to waste. I'm just using this because it's already leveled, so the enemies are strong. So it just shows that this works even once enemies get stronger. <laughs> The nice thing about spells is that um, those horsemen who take reduced physical damage, that deals with them. I've also got on Zeta a badass overdrive in case I want to use a physical attack for some reason. I could actually... Uh, I could actually... Buff as uh, if I wanted. I'm not. I don't need to right now. Um, as you can see, he's killing the bosses just fine. When it gets to the item gods, I'll need to buff him. Oh. We have those. Okay. Just what I'm gonna do here. I'm actually going to lift that enemy so he doesn't get killed. This one is in revenge mode. Magic boost on Usalia and Christo. By boosting Christo that uh, he has more int to power up his audio with. There we go, that enemy didn't get killed because it was lifted. And now I can skip the fall like I want to do anyway. So yeah, this is where I'm quite glad that I've got uh, maxed out Terra Spells and I also have the range up from Queen Orders. But if I had to, I could just use people to throw throw units. Okay, I could lift that level fish by throwing someone over, but I really can't be bothered. But yeah, if you really want to do, you could throw someone over, lift level fish, and then skip. Uh, you don't need the levels right now, but if you needed the levels, that's what you do. And after this, I'm going to switch over to the other method. Oops, I forgot to move Christo. So, in s this time, instead of putting sending Zeta in there, I am going to use a diver with the bot. I've got the boss floor forever and uh, setting in the cheat shop turned on. I forgot to point that out before. Yeah, I'm going to use a diver. It'll send me to the mystery room. I'm not. Yeah, while I could try and do the bank, I'm not even gonna. I'm not gonna bother right now. 
I'd rather do that with when I've got some units with max stats and why well, do have some uh, they're not actually set up properly right now because of uh, all these yeah, you know, because of all these uh, item world videos I'm making a lot of my units that would have otherwise had max stats have had their uh, stuff unequipped for, you know, for the videos No, I don't want to be better organized for this really If you don't want mystery rooms, remove Explorer and turn the mystery room uh, like switch off from the mystery room route because whatever else you should do. Well, you don't want the invader route either for that matter. But yeah, with the mystery room route on and with people at Explorer, I'm still going to get a lot of mystery rooms doing this. So yeah, doing it this way, it's uh, it skips seeing the innocent town, and you're also skipping uh, the non-boss like the non-boss floors, which is good. But of course, the downside is you're using up a bunch of divers, and if you want to get out, well, you're going to have to not you. Well, I suppose if you want to get out, you just enter the gate anyway. But yeah, the main downside to this is that uh, uses a bunch of divers. But yeah, we're basically not bothering with non-boss floors at all at this point. It's well, non—it's boss floors and mystery rooms right now. Okay, surprisingly few floors, uh, like, surprisingly few mystery rooms that require me to actually wipe the entire floor. Okay, we have an item guard. Uh, that would be 99 million stats if I didn't have uh, Christo with Evil Eye lowering its stats. So yeah, I think it's quite intimidating. Not going to be a problem. Really not going to be a problem. I could even mega change Usali now if I wanted, but uh, I don't need to. What? What's she weak to if anything? Wind. And just in case she's still alive after all that, she's not. But, uh, yep. Okay, let's just leave. Oh yeah, that was something I forgot. That was actually something I did need to show. Yeah, so if you don't have a uh, boss floor forever turned on, then you can skip. You'll skip past the boss floor. So yeah, this is the setting you want turned on. So this makes sure that any skip uh, floor skipping effects will land you on boss floors while they're going past it. But anyway, there are a couple of methods of farming training bonus. Um, I hope this was helpful, and thank you for watching.